Zanky Zero Last Beginning, the first person action dungeon crawler survival RPG, is the latest creation from the team that brought us the incredible Danganronpa series. Published by Spike Chunsoft and released on the PS4 and PC in the West, we are looking at the PlayStation 4 version today. The game begins with one of our characters, Haruto, awaking on a near-deserted island aptly named Garage Island, as the only eight inhabitants of this land live together in a garage. However, these eight characters aren't just the only eight on the island, but very possibly the only eight left in existence as the world all around the island is completely destroyed. Our main characters have little to no recollection of their past, nor how the world came to be how they currently see it. Yet this lapse in memory only serves as a small part of a mystery they need to uncover. Implanted in each character's belly buttons are small mechanical X-shaped devices known as X-keys. These X-keys store character data so that in the event of a character dying, they can be revived at a sort of arcade machine-like device known as the Extend Machine. Suffice to say the least, these characters have all before and will again been killed or die, and in effect they are all clones of their original bodies. These clones are very imperfect however, as they age rapidly and only have a life experience expectancy of about 13 days. This means new clones will be born as preschoolers, and within 13 days time you will see their character model change between being children, adults, middle-aged, and seniors. Though their mentality is always that of their original body, which for most of them is around 24 years of age. All the characters are beholden to this aging effect except for one, Sachika, who was fitted with a unique X key. So as it is, the mystery and point of the adventure in Zanki Zero Last Beginning is triple fold. The first mystery, of course, is to discover who our characters are what their past was like, and why they were chosen to survive the end of days. The second mystery is to discover why or how the world came to be destroyed. And the third, of course, is to find a way to break the aging effect of the cloning process so that humanity might have a chance of a real future. Zanki Zero plays out in chapters. Each chapter takes us to a new dungeon, and throughout these dungeons you are fed bits and pieces of character backstories. These are done through these little extend TV segments which are hosted by class classic, offbeat Danganronpa-style mascot characters. Every Extend TV episode follows the same formula. The two mascot characters share a bit of dark comedy banter. <laughs> oh, Mirai, you didn't know? People who are put on probation in a criminal trial are called probentoers. Then they watch a VHS which details small bits and pieces of a character's backstory, then the mascots return to banter a bit more in reflection to the tape they just watched, and the segment ends. Extend TV is possibly my favorite part of this game, as the counterpoint between the dark comedy and the incredibly dark and often disturbing character backstories is just an assault on the senses in a way that feels completely unforgettable. One moment you're laughing at the sheer absurdity of the dialogue, and the next your heart sits in the pit of your stomach at the grand realization of the messed up shit that our characters have had to live through. And when I say these characters' backstories are disturbing, I absolutely mean it. For more sense people, I would say to take this game with a fairly heavy trigger warning. And to make my point absolutely clear, let's cut the ad revenue of this video in half and say, without any bleeps or any degree of censorship, that the backstories in this game are pretty fucked up. To help things really sink in, each chapter we play as the characters whose backstory is being unfolded, witnessing revelations through their eyes rather than a central main character who's watching them from a distance, puts us in a more close and personal position with the character. We get to hear all of their internal dialogue and their personal mental struggle. Then we get to watch as they accept, adapt, and grow to accommodate the information they received. More than anything, I do feel Zanki Zero is a story about the characters, their revelations, and how they develop as a result. Although the mystery of the end of the world and the cloning still gives a lot to chew on and serves wonderfully as an overarching narrative to tie all these character stories together. The characters in Zanki Zero as well are all very memorable, each having their own little Little shticks and personality quirks. Though, if you're coming straight off Danganronpa and expecting more over-the-top Danganronpa extremism, you're not gonna get what you're looking for. Characters have quirks, but they're never driven to any far extreme. Except for maybe our resident thick girl, who more often than I feel is necessary, just makes commentary about eating food. I get it, 
you're thick, but not every line has to be about eating. She has a personality, but too often I feel the focus is on her weight and playing it up for comedy. It gets kind of old kind of fast, but she's the only one I found who suffered from this. Such an impertinent wiener. Visual design, save for Sachika, are pretty grounded as well, though every now and then characteristic Danganronpa large points of hair will pop up. Overall, I'd say this works to the game's benefit, as everything here works to keep these very human stories relatable. The story is told almost entirely through visual novel segments, and these segments, while somewhat frequent, are kept rather brief. The information contained within them is intriguing and fun enough in presentation that it makes the interruptions something to look forward to rather than be annoyed by, and it solidifies an excellent pace for this roughly 40-hour game. And yes, it all definitely builds up to a memorable ending. Over Overall, I'd say the story in Zanky Zero was fantastic. Now, it's hard to say much more about the story than that. Plus, Spike Chunsoft is cracking down on streams and videos of anything beyond Chapter 2 of the game, and for good reason, they don't want the game spoiled, and I'm not aiming to undermine them on that. So from here, let's move on to the actual gameplay, because a lot of the story elements actually end up working as gameplay mechanics as well. Earlier, I described the game's genre as a first-person action dungeon crawler survival RPG. Sure, that's even more of a mouthful than what you'd find in the average Lexington Steel video, but it's not inaccurate. Some of those genre descriptors are very self-explanatory. Every chapter, you get a new dungeon. You explore it in first person. Of course, this is typical of a first-person dungeon crawler. Everything is on a grid, there's traps and puzzles, the maps fill out as you explore new territory, and most dungeons have multiple floors. Some of the riddles and puzzles you need to solve to progress are cumbersome and obtuse, with occasionally far-reaching logic that did push me to the point of frustration once or twice. But for the most part, they're not that difficult. Unlike most dungeon crawlers, this game does not have random encounters, nor is it turn-based, hence the action part of the mouthful that I spit out earlier. Enemies roam around the map, and you find them in real time. Although all eight characters enter the dungeon with you, only four take part in battle at once. And depending on where an enemy is oriented to you when they attack, different characters will take different amounts of damage. Combat itself is kind of meh. It boils down to moving on your grid, attacking, moving out of the enemy's attack radius, waiting for your attack cooldowns to end, then attacking again. There is a charge attack which drains additional stamina, though it's rarely worth using in battle. There are some special attacks which you get later into the game, but really nothing mixes things up too much. That said, I did tend to prefer this to what usually happens in first-person dungeon crawlers, where random encounters get a bit insane, strategies get too particular, and the grind becomes incredibly necessary and time-consuming and tedious. For people who like normal first-person dungeon crawlers, this game might not work for you. All things considered, Zanky Zero is pretty easy, but I did prefer it this way, as my desire to just keep unfolding character backstories overshadowed everything. I didn't want much to stand in the way of that. As simple as this battle system is, though, there's still problems here. Often enemy attacks will either hardly affect you or kill you in one hit. There's not a lot of in-between. If you end up backed into a corner against a tough enemy, there's no escape, unless you use the instant teleport from dungeon, which not only forces you to retread old territory, but it also comes at a cost. A cost to the points that you need to use to revive characters. If I could make personal changes to combat, I would add an ability to vault over enemies. I would also add a mechanic that if you and an enemy strike at the same time, you could maybe have a QTE or a button mash showdown to see who gets the hit. Clones at different stages of development will have easier or harder time I'm clearing these challenges. I would also find a way to implement a real block system and make it easier for enemies to land hits while you're on diagonals to them. Diagonals are usually complete safe zones and make combat way too easy. But combat is only a light part of the gameplay mechanics. The rest of the mechanics cover the survival aspect of the game, which mostly affects the exploration. Let's start with the aging effect. As you journey from floor to floor in dungeons, or if you rest for the night, time will move forward by a day. Characters start with only a 13-day lifespan. In those 13 days, they move through the various stages of life, and at the end, they die, only to be revived and start the clock over again as children. Clones at different levels Levels of development have different sets of skills. Child clones, for instance, can hardly carry anything, and when you're over-encumbered, you're unable to move until you drop items or give them to other party members who can still hold more. 
This, of course, can make it a little rough having children in your battle party. However, these child clones can access areas adults can't, and open up new optional dungeon areas with better loot in them. Earlier, I mentioned stamina when stating that charge attacks will drain it. Stamina is a thing to keep note of, as it will almost constantly be going down. The more a character uses heavy attacks, or the closer they are to maxing their weight limit, the faster the stamina will decrease. Eating food will recover stamina, but not HP. To recover HP, you must rest in dungeons, which will then drain stamina in doing so. At zero stamina, your health will begin rapidly depleting until the character dies. Healing isn't as simple as eating and resting while hoping there's no enemies around either, as eating will fill your hunger meter. If you overeat, your characters get stressed and their stamina will decrease faster. This won't end until you get them to a washroom to relieve themselves. Although if the washroom is dirty, this will also stress them out and cost you some stamina. If you can't find a washroom, then the characters may eventually have an accident, which will cause them to stink and stress out your other party members, causing their stamina to drain faster, and causing even more negative effects for the character who messed themselves. Also, if you do mess yourself, the enemies gain a heightened awareness to you and they find you much more easily. As you do combat, you gain experience. As you gain experience, your characters level up, and as they level up, they gain skill points. These skill points can be used on skills such as Senior Aptitude, which will grant them slightly longer life expectancy. Other skills include hunting and fishing, or blunt and slash weapon proficiencies. By far, however, the most useful skill is the one that allows you to construct your base on Garage Island. At the start of the game, there's not much for you on Garage Island, but over time you can build a warehouse to store your items in. You can build a kitchen to cook your food, a workshop to build and upgrade weapons and items using salvage materials found in dungeons in. You can also build a set of bedrooms that recover characters' HP, but even these bedrooms have a system of their own, where characters can bunk together so that they can gain new perks for the next day, but at the cost of other perks. Zangi Zero has an incredible little set of survival mechanics, and it's very serious about the rules it employs. Simple things I should have expected took me off guard in the most pleasant of ways. For instance, there was one moment I returned to Garage Island to rest and recover my party's HP. Resting to recover HP is such a commonplace mechanic in RPGs, I never gave any thought to the fact that one of my characters was a senior citizen. I rested, time moved forward, and he died in his sleep. I wasn't even mad. I love this attention to detail. The way the various systems all play into one another kept this game feeling alive and exciting to me, even if the combat itself was somewhat underwhelming. Sometimes I even found it worth it to just return to Garage Island, pass enough time by resting so that everybody dies, and then revive them all at once. As every time a character revives, they gain bonus skills to help them withstand the types of damage they faced in their previous life. There is just so much going on here. If any of this is too much for you, however, the game has multiple difficulties. Upon starting the game, you can choose from three of them. I initially put the game on the second difficulty, assuming that was normal. However, I found that to be way too easy. By chapter two, a couple more difficulties were added, so I boosted the difficulty to level three, which seems to be about standard. The higher up in difficulty you go, the more dungeons are populated with enemies. The more experience you get per kill, the more traps affect you, and the more you're rewarded with with good loot. At the lowest difficulty, enemies are almost entirely stripped out of dungeons, and your stamina doesn't drain at all. So if you just want the character and the story experience without having to worry much about the survival and combat experience, this will have you covered. The brief time I played on this difficulty, I actually kind of liked it. Dungeons felt more like mystery zones, and the atmosphere wasn't affected or thrown off by lackluster enemy encounters. It allowed me to dig deeper into the feeling of the zones, the puzzles, and the mystery of the game. If this didn't also remove half of the survival elements and turn bosses into chumps, it'd probably be my preferred way to play this game in its current build. But I just can't accept bosses that don't do damage and can be killed in a single hit. On a technical level, this game is a bit hit or miss, so let's talk a little bit about this and then move on to the closing statements. The game runs absolutely fine, and loading time is lightning fast, as it should be. It's merely just a Vita port, but the game itself isn't really that exciting to look at. I'm cool with the character designs being more grounded than the team's previous efforts, but while the stages themselves aren't really bad, they don't really wow me in any way either. A lot of the sound effects are pretty stock, with only the sound of rain and thunder in one dungeon actually making my ears perk up like I was hearing something cool. 
There's something here. What could this be? There's something here. The music, aside from the ragtime piano and the Extend TV segments, <laughs> isn't memorable in the slightest. It does fit the game's mood, so I can't complain, but a catchy hook here or there wouldn't hurt. Zanky Zero supports dual audio and dual subtitles. I played the game in English like a fake weeaboo, but thought they'd done a good job. Not much of the game is voice, but it's understandable why. Clones at different ages have different voices, so it'd be too much to record every scene multiple times to facilitate the voice age permutations. Zanky Zero supports auto progression for its visual novel segments, but generally I found the pauses between one line ending and the next line beginning to be way too long. You don't choose family, and I didn't choose who I live with in the sea of ruins. Only those who were dealt a good hand can play for the win. Those with a losing hand like mine can only endure. And lastly, yes, some of this game has been censored in the West at the behest of the publisher. The vast majority of alterations involve lolly pictures containing panty shots, though their exclusion from the game was not something I actually felt along the way. If you'd like more info on this, I'll leave a link to more in the description below. In closing, Zanky Zero is a game rather unlike anything I've ever played, combining various elements and gameplay motifs from different genres to breathe new life into a genre that I typically find rather tedious. At the end of it all, despite some shortcomings or rather lackluster mechanics here and there, it is a game that I immensely enjoyed and will remember for a long time to come because of the story. Because of the pacing, the dialogue, the comedy, the characters, and the unique blend of mechanics. Though I've had my complaints, I feel this may go down as one of the best or at least most positively memorable games I end up playing all year. Sure, it's too early to call that, but Zanky Zero really makes me wonder how many more fresh and exciting ideas this team has up their sleeve. It's a shame it's involved in censorship controversy and its sales and reception will hurt even more as a result of it, but it is a game I'm definitely glad I took the time to play and support. An excellent start to a new franchise and I really look forward to whatever this team works on going forward. And that's all I'm gonna say on Zanky Hanky Panky Zero Last Beginning. If you guys found this video helpful or useful at all, you know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video if you can. If you really enjoy the content, consider supporting the show on Patreon. Links to socials are in the description, and as always, folks, thanks for watching.